So welcome back. I hope your week has been good. This is public. Uh, this is uh, public relations. Today we are focusing on topic seven: government and lobbying activities. Government and lobbying activities. One thing you must note is that government and lobbying activities are part of strategic public relations activities. So topic six, we looked at um, corporate social responsibility. And when we looked at that particular topic, also said that uh, we looked at financial public relations. And I started by saying that financial public relations is strategic public relations activity. Even CSR is a strategic PR activity. Same case with topic seven, government and lobbying activities. This is a strategic PR activity. So for those joining us for the first time, my name is David Maina, and we can start our class. We are going to look at the overview of government and lobbying activities. And uh, you can see our topic is government and lobbying activities. Okay. There is and there. Eh? And stands for it's a conjunction. And is a conjunction, meaning those are two separate terms. It's the government, and then there is what we call lobbying. Those are two terms that most of the time goes hand in hand. Um, um, so some scholars, you'll hear them talking about lobbying activities or PR lobbying activities. Thus, you will hear them talking about lobbying only. But now, lobbying the government, they go hand in hand. Because lobbying is mostly done by PR practitioners through lobbyists who work in the government. No, not through lobbyists. It is done by PR practitioners. Of course, yeah, we use lobbyists. We can have PR practitioners who are lobbyists. And these lobbyists are people that used to work in the government. And now what are they doing? They're trying to push their agendas hard by, by, by government officials. So the government officials, once they are making decisions, they will make decisions in favor of organization that the lobbies are representing. So a PR practitioner does not necessarily mean that he must be a lobbyist. No. We are going to look in, uh, deeply into this. We are going to realize that lobbyists are people who knows exactly how the government works. They have worked with the government before. Now, you might be a PR practitioner, but you have never worked in uh, with the government before. Therefore, you cannot be a lobbyist. Because we need to know policies, how they are, how they are made, how, they, how these policies are ex, uh, ex, uh, expect you or how you are expected. do some things uh, as far as the, the policies are concerned. So the relationship between government and lobbying is a frequent topic in discussion of current affairs. So I'm saying that you cannot separate government and lobbying. So this chapter, this topic, it will aim to describe and analyze the con connection between these two concepts, offering an insight from both political public relations perspectives. By exploring this relationship, we aim to shed light on crucial aspects of PR practice that extends beyond market interaction. 
This area often referred to by various titles, including, which includes lobbying as key component and plays a significant role in shaping what you call public policy and opinion. Now, when you talk about lobbying, for those people who have not yet gotten my point yet, lobbying is an activity like, uh, let me just give an example. We had the finance bill yesterday in red, being presented in parliament, and there were discussions that were taking place concerning that finance bill. Before the finance bill was presented in, um, in parliament, it was uh, put into the public discussion. Because uh, the government really wanted to know the public, uh, what the public thinks about what we call the finance bill. There was what we call the public participation. Now, those people who participated were officials from companies, officials from either schools, universities, big companies, corporates, so on and so forth. And you could hear some people from corporate saying, Many organi big organizations say that this finance bill should not go through because of A, B, C, D. Now, those ones, they are a link between their organization and the government. Now, they are advising the government that if you do this, we may not be able to survive for the long term, or we are going. To, to do what? Move our company and go somewhere else. Because the cost of production or the cost of uh, the cost of uh, the organization being here is going to be very high. So these are people who are advising the government, don't do this, don't pass this finance bill. Because if you do it, then you're going to affect us the only thing we are going to do is we are going to do what? Go and invest in another company. Or we are going to move from this company and invest in another company because it is going to be difficult for us to operate in this country. Now, these people, we can call them lobbyists. Because they are lobbying that new peace don't pass this finance bill. It's going to affect us time. Pass it. That's what they are telling the government. So that's the work of lobbyists. And you cannot be a lobbyist and you don't understand some policies. Like for example, uh, an institution want to buy what we call a land. And maybe this land, the government has said that this land should not be sold to anybody. But you are an investor. You want to come and invest. As you are coming to invest, you are going to help the people there. If you are coming up, you are, you are building an industry. Number one, you will employ the community. Number two, you will bring revenue. Number three, you will do this. Number four, you will do this. You can send your lobbies, the government, lobby with them, lobby with the ministers for minister for land and others, that at least they can. They can easen their what? They can easen their. Uh, they can easen themselves and give you that piece of land that you can build that industry. That one is called lobby. So definition of lobbying. I've explained it in a layman's language. In a simpler term. Let us see what uh, the scholars are saying, definition of lobbying. So lobbying, it can be defined as a persuasive activity to change public policy in favor of the organization by the groups of people who are not directly involved in political process. Very good. Now, when you talk about lobbying, you don't do lobbying because maybe you want to become the next, uh, the next uh, MP or member of parliament. You don't do lobbying because you want to become the next uh, member of county assembly. You don't do lobbyists because you want to become 
the next president of Kenya or whatever country. No, lobbying, it is not done for political purposes. Lobbying is a persuasive activity. You are persuading the government to change its policy. For example, when a government comes up with what we call new tax policies, you will hear organization visiting the government and telling the government, can you kindly change those, uh, those new tax policies? Because they are going to affect our output. They are going to affect us and so on and so forth. So to change the policy in favor of an organization by the groups of people who are not directly involved in the political process. So as defined in literature and, and of carried out in practice, it relates to groups. So lobbying relates to groups. What they may want, and it government controls what they want how they might persuade the government to agree with them. Because the government is, these are people who work in the government. People are the ones that make policies. These policies that they make might favor you or they might not favor you. So if they are not favoring you, you go and sit down with the government officials. You tell them, my friend, the policies that you are coming up they are draconian. We cannot operate with these policies. You are killing this organization. You are killing creativity. You are chasing us away. You are just trying to tell us, go and invest in another country. If at all, maybe it's a, it's a what we call um, a new tax policy. Therefore, we are saying lobbying is done by all staff of organized entities in all sectors of public life and by groups of all sizes and reputation. It doesn't matter how big your organization is, whether it's a corporate, whether it is an SME, small medium enterprise, it doesn't matter. Lobbying is done by all staff of organized entities in all sectors of public life and by groups of all size and reputation. So then, this word lobbying is used to include what is known in literature as pressure groups. Sometimes you can call them activists. Activists are good lobbyists. Pressure groups are good lobbyists. They put pressure in the government. They put pressure in the government. Change the policies or to change maybe the decisions that they have made in their favor. The word is, it, uh, is uh, it's used to include what is known in literature as pressure groups and interest groups. Those and sectored groups, that, that, uh, that means uh, uh, that that meaning is extended to cover private companies, publicly funded bodies as schools, universities, hospital trusts. We can have bodies like schools. A policy can be passed by the government, or it can be made by a government by the government, and this policy it is uh, it is draconian in nature as far as schools are concerned as far as universities are concerned and as far as hospitals are concerned. What will they do? They will look for interest groups. They will look for sectored groups. They will look for pressure groups to, to come and put pressure on the government to change those particular policies that they have made. So these groups, they seek to achieve the purpose for which their members came together, e.g. making profit following a recreation, ETC. Groups lobby, when groups are lobbying, they lobby to ensure that the government is at least neutral about their purposes and at best supportive. 
Like for example, you cannot come up with what we call new tax policy that is so much, that is, that is putting a lot of burden, a very heavy burden on the organization. The organization will form what we call lobby, uh, we will we'll come up with what we call the lobby groups or the lobbyists. And these lobbies will ensure that the government is at least neutral about their purposes and at best supportive. That's why we say you cannot separate lobbying from the government. Even if we were to talk about lobbying, we will not, we will not stop talking about lobbying and politics. We will not stop talking about lobbying and government because these politicians are the ones that comes up with what we call bills. And these bills, they are passed into laws after presidential assent. assent, assent. Once the president assents the bill, it becomes the law. They are the ones that write policies that organizations should follow. That's why we cannot talk about lobbying without looking at the government or politics. So let's look at uh, the practice of PR specialism, lobbying, the practice of PR specialism. So lobbying has been defined as persuasive activity undertaken by groups to influence government policy making. That's what we have said. It is an integral part of PR practice because it is a communication-based activity centered on a group or organization seeking to persuade and negotiate with its government stakeholders on matters of opportunity or threats. So we are saying that lobbying, it's a PR thing because it, uh, it's, you are, it, it, it's all about negotiating. It's all about negotiating. The way you negotiate your terms. It's like when you go to the market and you want to buy a, a, maybe, a, say for example, a, a pair of shoes. And maybe the pair of shoes is being sold at maybe 2,500 shillings, but you have 1,500 shillings, you start negotiating. You can only be able to win the negotiation if you are good in communication. So that's why we are saying communication experts, mostly, we are mostly when you, when you look at communication experts, they come from the PR field or the PR practitioners are very good in communication so that they can be able to negotiate on behalf of their organization. Because uh, lobbying is all about negotiating, negotiating terms in the policy document and advising the government and also the organization on what to do. So it is a PR activity. So lobbying then, it is performed by individuals in two main employment categories. So we can have lobbyists, in-house lobbyists, who are directly employed by the organization. And we can also have hired lobbyists who are contracted for specific tasks over usually short periods. Now, an in-house lobbyist is a person who has been employed by the organization. Is an ordinary employee of the organization. That one, we have employed him. He is a lobbyist. Then we can also have hired lobbyists. Hired lobbyists is when we need lobbyists, we go and hire them. Just like, for example, some of us have got lawyers, family lawyers. In case one of you is arrested or have has got uh, what we call um, some things that he needs to deal with the court, you tell the family lawyer and he comes and represents you. But some of us do not have lawyers, majority of us. So when we are faced with a legal consequence, we hire lawyers. You go to them, you hire them. After that thing is done, or after that, uh, that particular thing is done, you do what we call 
you dispense the lawyers. Until now something else happened, you go and hire them again. So the same case with a lobbyist. We have in-house lobbyists employed by the organization, and we have outside uh, what we call um, hired lobbyists who are contracted for specific tasks over a usually short period of time. Now let's look at in-house lobbyists. Now in-house lobbyists, they are often referred to as public affairs. I don't know that you have gone to some organization and you see we have public affairs office. So now if you see this title, public affairs, that one is an in-house lobbyist or corporate communication manager or corporate communication officer huh? or public, uh, public what? Public affairs manager huh? or public relations manager. Huh? or communication manager or communication specialist those kind of things but specialist is an out it's a this one is not an in-house lobbyist this one is a um a hired lobbyist specialist if you hear something like specialist something like uh expert those things those ones are hired so in-house lobbyists often referred to as public affairs or corporate communications manager typically have staff rather than align relationship with their representatives boards. Those whom lobbyists, whether in-house or hired, report to within a group are known as their principal. So we have in-house lobbyists and we have outward, outward uh, uh, in-house and outward lobbyists or hired lobbyists. They have the person that they report to. The person that they report to, like for example, if you go and lobby something in the government, maybe a certain section in a policy touches on you as an organization, and so an organization sends you to go and lobby for them so that the government can change that particular section in that particular policy. Now, when you come back, you will be reporting to someone, telling him how it has gone. The person you report to, whether you are an in-house lobbyist or whether you are an out uh, a hired lobbyist, that person you report to is called the principal. I hope that one is well understood. So then, what do lobbyists actually do? What do they do? 